people started handing me things when I'd like speak to a crowd as like, well, uh, lucky charms or keepsakes or things that uh, meant something to them. And so now I have a habit of I always carry around and I have a whole bowl full of them, and I don't, I can't carry all of them around because then it'd, they'd be. But you know, I'll, t- I'll pick out a few things uh, that I just stick in my pocket to remind me of all the people I've met along the way, and 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 the stories they told me. So the, uh, so I'll just give you. This is what I had in my pocket today. Uh, I've got. This is, this is a uh, rosary beads that uh, Pope Francis gave me. Wow. Uh, that I that obviously. Uh, means a lot to me because I, I so admire him and it makes me think about you know, peace and uh, you know, promoting understanding and ethical behavior. Um, Assemble the army! Welcome, one and all, to the number one Catholic podcast on the internet. Cafeteria Catholics going where the mainstream Catholic media refuses to go, will not Go, and I am your humble host, Ephraim Cortez. And you better believe we are going to go where the mainstream Catholic media will not go today. Where local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, absolutely will not go. It's going to get turbulent today. Hold on to your seats. And when I say, hold on, I mean it, I mean it, hold on to your seats, it's going to get rough, it's going to be a rough ride today, I might even have to apologize at the end of the show, okay, it's going to get rough, now you know me, right, I'm an information bug, I'm always out there on the internet doing research, I've got nothing better to do. And if you've listened to the show, you've heard me talk about these so-called peace and justice movements, such as Pax Christi USA, Call to Action USA. They claim to be all about peace and justice, equality, tolerance, all that fluffy good stuff. That's what they are all about, right? Peace and justice. Pax Christi USA, Call to Action USA, and other heretical groups. It's all a facade. It's all a smoke screen, right? It's it's got nothing to do. Pax Christi USA, Call to Action USA, they've got nothing to do with legitimate peace and justice. They are all about pushing anti-Catholic thought. Pushing, advancing an anti-Catholic agenda. Women's ordination the acceptance of homosexuality even within the priesthood. We've got Bishop Thomas J. Gumbleton, president founder of Pax Christi USA, who for years has pushed an anti-Catholic homosexual agenda. He is all for homosexuality, sees nothing wrong with homosexuality, and we've got to cut him some slack. Because Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, he has had to deal with homosexuality on a personal level. He has a brother who came out some years ago. And so as a priest, he has had to deal with the question of what's going to happen to his brother as it pertains to eternal life, to eternal salvation. What's going to happen with his brother, right? And so we, we, we've got to cut him some slack. We've got to cut him some slack. But here is Bishop Gumbleton addressing the issue of homosexuality within his own family. Take a listen. Bishop Gumbleton, your brother is gay? Yes, yeah. Right. And, and that, that was a very difficult thing when, when he came out. Uh, is he your younger, younger or older brother? 
He's, he's my youngest brother. There were nine of us in the family. I'm number six, and he was number nine. And uh, But the thing I remember about that, uh, you know, trying to deal with it, is when he came out, um, it was very troubling to my mother. You know, my, my father was already deceased, but my mother was having a very difficult, great difficulty with it, although I wasn't sensitive enough, sensitive enough to be aware of it. But... You know, and she was in her 80s at that time, mid-80s, and and so she was concerned. Uh, and one night when I was home and she was talking to me, she uh, asked with great, um, well, difficulty. I mean, she, I could see she was deeply troubled. And she said to me, is Dan going to hell? And so you see, he has had to deal with this issue on a personal level. Okay? And so it explains his justification of and for homosexual behavior. Right? But he is the founding president of Pax Christi USA. The founding president. And so from the beginning, Pax Christi USA, their brand of peace and justice, of equality and so forth is rooted in the Bishop Thomas Gumbleton ideal. This idea that there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. And that women should be ordained, right? Well, you, you've got to make that part of the equation, right? If you can accept homosexuality, then what's wrong with ordaining women to the priesthood, right? If sodomy, if sodomy is okay then you've just entered into a slippery slope. And you've entered that slippery slope from its very peak, right? The acceptance of homosexuality, if you can start there, then it's way downhill from that precipice, right? From that sinful precipice of acceptance of homosexual action. And so it all kind of falls into place. If you can accept homosexuality, then why not women's ordination? Why not abortion? Why not contraception? But he continues with his answer to his mother. Is Dan going to go to hell? Is my little brother going to go to hell? And that's what was troubling her. She, because of what she had heard from the church all these years. And, and that's, you know, she couldn't. Uh, I know I would not have died in peace if she was convinced he was going to hell. And so that's a terrible thing to do to a parent. And, and it's not necessary. What did you tell her? Pardon? What did you tell her? I said, no, he's not. God made Dan the way Dan is. It's not something Dan chose. And so God is not going to send Dan to hell because so, he's a gay man. So... God made his brother that way. God made Dan a homosexual man. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. And so you see how he arrives at justification for homosexuality because it's a personal issue with him, right? But the point being that Pax Christi USA was founded in heresy. It's not about peace and justice. It's about sin. It's about accepting sin. It's about anti-Catholic thought. And this ideal, this ideology permeates throughout all of its more prominent members. Pax Christi USA. You've got Sister Helen Prejean a frequent speaker at Pax Christi USA events. Someone who we may know as a, an opponent of the death penalty. This is what she is known for, right? But she is also for homosexuality. She is for the ordination of women. As a matter of fact, here is Sister Helen Prejean on the ordination of women people are you for the ordination of women and do you think we'll one day see a woman pope one day we will 
because there's just not substantive reasons against it. It boils down to a very physical, a very physical argument. You had a pontifical association of, I mean, of the Vatican that looked scripturally and said there's no scriptural reason. And it just boils down to that women don't physically resemble Jesus. And we could focus in on this image to exactly what that means. But when you just are boiling down an argument to the fact that it's been the practice, and it's gonna, I predict it, it's inevitable. So you see, this is their brand, Pax Christi USA, Call to Action USA, and others. This is their brand of peace and justice. This is their brand of equality. Heresy! It's heresy. And I happened to be on the internet the other day. You know me, I'm an information bug. I'm always on the internet doing research about nothing sometimes, right? I just, I love the internet. I love the internet. We better get on it before Obama shuts it down, right? (laughs) Before the Obama FCC shuts down the internet, take advantage of it, okay? No, but I love to be on the internet. I love to research. And I love to get on Call to Action USA's website. I love to get on Pax Christi USA's website. And I told you, remember, it's going to get turbulent. It's about to get turbulent. Hold on to your seats, okay? But I love to be on these websites, right? Because you have to keep your enemies close, right? You have to know what it is that they are planning, what it is they have in store for the Catholic Church, Because we know that it's nothing good, right? It's nothing good that they have planned for the Catholic Church. Because peace and justice is nothing more than a facade with these people. It's all about women's ordination. It's all about homosexuality. It's all about contraception. Sister Joan Chittister, another person, another sister, right? Claims to be a sister, right? And what's the deal with these nuns, right? What's the deal with these nuns? They take off their habits... And it seems it's it's downhill from there. Once again, slippery slope. You take off the habit, and you become heretical. Or maybe you were heretical before, before you took off the habit, right? Is that the way it works? But what's the deal with all these heretical sisters, right? Sister Joan Chittister. She's another one. Let's go ahead and play a little clip. Sister Joan Chittister. Do I have her here? Okay, this is some promo from a show that uh, it's better that we not even mention the, the the name of the show. But here is a promo. They are promoting this appearance or this interview they will be conducting with Sister Joan Chittister. And this is how they promote her. Next time, Benedict and Sister Joan Chittister has long advocated for Catholic women's ordination and a greater voice for lay people, heroine to some, dangerous rebel to others. I have a, a disease called justice, and I can spot injustice at a great distance and feel compelled uh, to confront it. Well, you know what? I can spot heresy from a long distance, right? And I can spot a heretic from a long distance, because they all look the same, these sisters, right? With the short haircuts, the crew cuts, you know? The man nuns, this is what, this is what I lovingly re- refer to them as, right? The man nuns, right? Because they want to be priests, they want women's ordination, and uh, they've got the pantsuits, they've got the short haircuts, you know? So they are the man nuns, you know? They don't come from a convent. They come from a coven. These man nuns. This is where they come from, okay? They are the tools of Satan. This is who these women are, okay? But uh, Sister Joan Chittister, Sister Helen Prashan, and many others, Sister Simone Campbell, they are all affiliated in one way or another with Paxa Christi USA. And so this is what this group is really all about. They are not about peace and justice. You just heard her talk about Sister Joan Chittister. You just heard her talk about what she perceives justice to be. Women's ordination. This is an injustice, right? It is an injustice that the Catholic Church will not ordain women. It is an injustice. Never mind that it is a matter of faith. 
and that we as Catholics must succumb to the Catholic Church as it pertains to doctrine, as it pertains to dogma, as it pertains to teaching, right? We must succumb to the authoritative teaching of the Catholic Church, right? But yet, there she is, opposing the teaching of the Catholic Church. She wants women ordained to the priesthood. This is their brand of peace and justice. Their brand of equality. Right, but anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So, I'm on the internet doing research, and I come across this article or reflection on the Pax Christi USA website. Right? And it says, Nine bishops, one abbot, dine and dialogue with peace activists. And hey, what's wrong with that? It sounds great, right? Bishops getting together with peace activists and they're having a powwow over, you know, uh, peace, right? Peace. Who doesn't want peace, right? Here's the peace sign, right? You can't see the peace. Here's the peace sign. You can't see me, right? I'm on, I'm behind the microphone here. But there's the peace sign, right? It's all about peace. It's all about peace. And this article was written by Tony Magliano. Right, and this is what he says, right? He says, During the recent U.S. Catholic Bishops Fall Assembly in Baltimore, this is back in 2015, several bishops and one abbot decided to skip dinner at the downtown Marriott Waterfront Hotel and walked several blocks to an inner city parish to share a simple meal with about 30 peace activists, myself included, says the author. And so, bishops getting together right bishops getting together with peace activists and some of these peace activists according to mr magliano were members of the catholic peace fellowship members of pax christi usa and we just heard what members of pax christi usa support do we uh, did we not uh women's ordination homosexuality they are all over the map when it comes to heresy, right? They love heresy. It's not about peace and justice, but here they are, right? These bishops mingling, entertaining heretics, entertaining heretics. Pax Christi USA, the Catholic Worker, all of these groups are there with these bishops. And they are discussing, according to the article, they're discussing peace, right? This is what they are discussing. And uh, they list here on this website, uh, Pax Christi USA website, Mr. Uh, Magliano, he lists these bishops. And among these names of bishops, right, uh, among these bishops listed, we find the name. Now, hold on to your seats. I told you it's going to get rough. It's going to get turbulent, all right? But among the names of these bishops, we find the name of the Bishop of the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, Bishop John Stowe. Now, before we get into this, right, Bishop John Stowe seems like a good man. I've met him a couple of times. Uh, we've had very short conversations, okay, and we actually did have an email exchange, with, which, which I will read to you here in a minute. Uh, concerning actually this this article I emailed him about this article and wanted some clarification and I, I got a response from the Bishop Bishop John Stowe but we find our Bishop consorting with heretics right consorting with heretics and as you know our Bishop he has been upfront and honest about his involvement in peace and justice and there's nothing wrong with legitimate peace and justice right but we know that at Pax Christi USA when it comes to peace and justice it's all a facade right you heard it the president founder of Pax Christi USA is a longtime advocate of homosexuality even within the clergy 
even within the clergy. You know, we've had the homosexual sex abuse scandal within the Catholic Church, and yet Bishop Gumbleton sees nothing wrong with homosexuals within the clergy. It's not a pedophile scandal that has taken place, that has rocked the church. It is a homosexual sex abuse scandal that has rocked the church. It's not pedophilia. It's homosexuality. It's sodomy. Sodomy, right? That's not mince any words. It's sodomy. It's not homosexuality. Homosexuality makes it about people. It makes it about the person, right? It's bait and switch by the left. Bait and switch by some within the Catholic Church. It's not about homosexuality. It's about sodomy. This is what the uh, homosexual uh, abuse scandal within the church is all about. It's about sodomy. Young men being sodomized by priests. That's what it's about. It's about sodomy. And so, even with the sex abuse scandal, the homosexual sex abuse scandal, we've got members of Pax Christi, the founding president of Pax Christi USA advancing homosexuality even within the church, even within the clergy. And this is what Pax Christi is all about. And here we have our bishop consorting with these people, right? Even if it is about peace and justice, right? Even if that were the topic and that's all they talked about, which we will never know, right? I wasn't there, and so perhaps uh, this is all they talked about was peace. You know, they had some, some members, three members of uh, Catholic Peace Fellowship who talked about, uh, about war, okay? And this is a, 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 a group uh, whose members are all veterans, right? And to be fair, I could not find anything heretical c coming out of this group, out of this movement. And so I can't say that they are for women's ordination, and I can't say that they are for homosexuality, but give it some time. Give it some time, right? Right? Let the sister uh, Joan Chittisters of the world get involved with these groups, and we will see what happens, right? Give it some time. Give it some time. But for the most part, Pax Christi USA, Call to Action USA, Peace and Justice, it's all a facade. It's all a facade. And so I get in touch with the bishop, Bishop John Stowe. And I want to ask him, I want to ask him about this. Right? And so I email the bishop. And I'm going to read to you the email. I was very respectful of the bishop. Very respectful. But I wanted to know. I was curious. And so I asked. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read the entire email here. Okay? It says, and this is me speaking, it says, Greetings and blessings, Your Excellency. Recently, I came across an article by Mr. Tony Magliano, a syndicated Catholic columnist. The article was featured on the Pax Christi USA website. In the article, Magliano informs the reader, during the 2015 gathering of U.S. Catholic bishops in the fall of 2015, that you, along with a number of brother bishops and an abbot, attended a meeting that included members of Pax Christi USA and the Catholic Worker Movement. Okay, so I'm, I'm respectful, being respectful, right? And I, I continue and I say, I must say, I found this revelation quite disturbing, as it is widely known that Pax Christi USA and the Catholic Worker Movement are not exactly in cohesion with certain aspects of the Catholic faith. Such aspects include the ordination of women as well as the Church's teachings on homosexuality. Your Excellency, since your installation, you've been very open and honest about your involvement in the areas of peace and justice, and I personally believe these aspects of the faith to be critical to the life of a diocese. However, I ask that you please set my mind at ease in regards to this reported meeting with those not so friendly to the teaching of the Catholic Church. 
This meeting will be a topic of conversation on my podcast, Cafeteria Catholics. And so any light you might be able to shed would be greatly appreciated by the audience and me. And so I'm respectful, right? But I want to know. I want to know. Because I'm curious, right? And any time, any time that the bishop wants to come on Cafeteria Catholics here and be a part of the podcast and, you know, we can hash it out here, talk about uh, where he stands, right? Where he stands on, on peace and justice. Is it a legitimate brand of peace and justice, right? Because, as you know, back a couple of months ago, we had Sister Helen Preshawn here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And as you heard, she is a supporter of women's ordination. And so we had her here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And it, it, was, it was worrisome, to say the least, okay? And I came across another article, because I'm, you know, I'm always doing research on the Internet. So I come across this other ar- article, uh, uh, from the Lexington Herald Leader, the secular newspaper here in the diocese, or not in the diocese, but in Lexington, Kentucky. And they talked about, it's an article on Sister Helen Preshawn and her visit to the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And it says, it says, Bishop John Stowe of the Catholic Diocese of Lexington told Tuesday night's audience that Preshawn was one of the heroes of the American Catholic Church. She is a hero of the American Catholic Church, according to our bishop. People. Are you for the ordination of women, and do you think we'll one day see a woman pope? One day we will, because there's just not substantive reasons against it. It boils down to a very physical, a very physical argument. You had a pontifical association of, I mean, of the Vatican that looked scripturally and said there's no scriptural reason. And it just boils down to that women don't physically resemble Jesus. And we could focus in on this image to exactly what that means. But when you just are boiling down an argument to the fact that it's been the practice and it's going to, I predict it, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that we will have a woman pope, not not just a, a priest. Women will not only be ordained, according to Sister Helen Prejean, one day we will see a woman pope. And Bishop John Stowe refers to this woman as one of the heroes of the American Catholic Church. Is there a problem here? Do you see a problem here? Is there a reason to be nervous here? Peace and justice, a red flag, goes up for me. I don't know about you, but it goes up for me. Okay? It truly does. It, it goes up for me. You know? Peace and justice has been hijacked by the likes of Sister Helen Prejean, by the likes of Sister Joan Chittister, by the likes of Thomas, Thomas Gumbleton, by the likes of Sister Simone Campbell and others, many others, many others, Sister Janine Gramick, all of these supporters of homosexuality, supporters of contraception, of abortion. This is peace and justice today within the Catholic Church. And so I want to know, I want to know, where does Bishop John Stowe stand on peace and justice. Is it a a legitimate brand of peace and justice? Or is it this, this driven, this heretically driven agenda of peace and justice, so called, that advocates for the ordination of women, that advocates for the acceptance of homosexuality even within the clergy, right? And we are starting to see rumblings of this, even within synods, the synod on the family, right? The synod on the family. Certain members, certain members of the clergy pushing for homosexuality, the acceptance of homosexuality, right? We are hearing these rumblings from synods, from synods. And you've heard me play clips here, you know, uh, uh, 
Cardinal Burke, Cardinal George Pell, who has said that this whole idea of communion for the divorced and remarried is nothing more than a stalking horse. And what they are really after is the acceptance of homosexual unions, the, the acceptance of homosexual marriage, right? It's Pax Christi USA. Call to Action USA, their agenda penetrating even into the highest levels of the Catholic Church. And Bishop John Stowe was kind enough and generous enough to take time out of his day and actually respond to my email. And after the break, we will go through the email, fellow Catholics, okay? So, stick around. We will see you, fellow Catholics, on the other side. Please do not touch that mouse. Nine Lives presents Morris. The castle's almost finished, Your Majesty. Good. Reserve the dungeon for yourself. Here's the enchanted tower. This is her second childhood today. Hungry, Morris? Lower the drawbridge. I'm leaving. Don't be finicky. There's nine lives. Bark. The sea winds bring a message. Liver and chicken. Savory stew. Nine Lives savory stew. Mm. Nine Lives. Nutritious foods cats really like. Even Morris. Only fit for a king, Nine Lives. First she squeezes the tomatoes, then she squeezes the melon, and now she's squeezing the new Charmin bathroom tissue. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. But Mr. Whipple, this new Charmin bathroom tissue is so soft, so squeezably soft. Oh, that soft fragrance. Mrs. Logan. Charmin is so deep down, squeezably soft, it's irresistible. <laughs> But, Mrs. Logan, the sign. <laughs> oh, if you only knew, Mrs. Logan. Can't resist it myself. I love to sneak a squeeze on the sly. Mr. Whipple, please don't squeeze the Charmin. New squeezably soft Charmin bathroom tissue from Procter & Gamble. Take it home and squeeze it. Assemble the army! I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. Goodbye. Somebody got it! I told you, I told you, fellow Catholics. We go where mainstream Catholic media, where local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, refuses to go, will not go. And Bishop John Stowe, as I said, he is invited on this podcast anytime. Uh, we can talk about this. Uh, and we will ask Bishop John Stowe some real questions, right? Not these fluff questions he gets over at the uh, you know local Catholic radio station here in the Diocese of Lexington. We will ask him some real questions. So, uh, Bishop John Stowe responds to my email, fellow Catholics. And it's Caucus Sunday, by the way. Caucus Sunday in Iowa. Who will you be voting for over there in Iowa? Donald Trump, he's leading in the polls. Trump and Cruz leading in the polls in the Iowa uh, caucus. But it means nothing, right? These polls mean nothing. Right, uh, last time around, it was Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney who were leading in the Iowa poll, po uh, polls. I can't talk today, fellow Catholics. But they were leading in the polls, and it turned out that it was Rick Santorum, who was at 18%, I think, at the time. And he came out of nowhere and won the Iowa caucus. So you never know. You never know what's going to happen. But Donald Trump, at the top of the polls in Iowa... New Hampshire, all over the place. Uh, the guy is just wreaking havoc. <laughs> he is wreaking havoc all over the place. Right? He's going to build a wall, and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. 
right? And people are dumbfounded, right? Everyone is dumbfounded over the attraction to Donald Trump. What is it about the guy, right? What is it about the guy? And he's exposed establishment. The establishment uh, has been exposed by Donald Trump. He has exposed, and this is part of the reason why I think that they like Donald Trump, those who are for Donald Trump. I'm not necessarily for Donald Trump. You know, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a, a Libertarian. I am a Catholic, right? And I vote with a Catholic mindset. This is how I vote, right? And so I don't really, I, I don't care who's ahead in the polls. I don't care who's behind. I don't care who wins the caucus doesn't matter to me because in the end I'm going to vote my conscience as a Catholic, right? Now I do have some some issues on which, you know, I agree with Donald Trump, some issues on which I agree with Ted Cruz. There are no issues where I agree with Hillary Hillary Clinton or Sanders. There's no issues whatsoever. Right? But as you know, I am a fan of building a wall as a Catholic, okay? As a Catholic, I am a fan of building a wall and keeping illegal immigrants out of this country, right? Illegal immigrants are killing American citizens. American citizens are being killed. They are being robbed. They are being raped by illegal immigrants, and hey, that's one topic that me and the and the uh, bishop can get into here on cafeteria Catholics, right? Because I know that he's on the other side of the issue, right? As most Catholic clergy are, right? They've got this misguided understanding that in order for you to be a compassionate Catholic, a merciful Catholic, that you just have to open the doors wide open and just let anybody in here. Right? Just let anyone in here. No orderly process. They say that they are not for the violation of the law, but yet they support Barack Hussein Obama in his violation of the law as it pertains to illegal immigration. Right? And so you can't have it both ways. If you are not for the violation of the law as it pertains to illegal immigration then how can you be for Barack Hussein Obama as he violates the law on illegal immigration, right? How can you pat him on the back for what he's done? His violation of the Constitution, his overreach as it pertains to illegal immigration into this country. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. And you can't be for, you know, uh, the upholding of the Constitution as it pertains to the HHS mandate and yell foul in that instance, and yet in the instance of illegal immigration, it's okay if the Constitution is violated. You can't have it both ways. Let's be consistent. Let's be consistent about this, okay? But Bishop John Stowe, he responds to my email regarding this article, this meeting, where we had members of a heretical group, Pax Christi Christi USA, coming together with bishops, nine bishops, nine bishops, nine bishops, and one abbot, one one abbot, one lone abbot there at the meeting. But they come together, these bishops, and Pax Christi USA, they come together to talk about peace, right? And we, we see the brand of peace that is advanced by Pax Christi USA. But anyway, our bishop, he responds and he says, Dear Mr. Cortez, Pax Christi USA, as an organization, does not take positions on homosexuality or the ordination of women. It is concerned with promoting the promotion of peace and nonviolence, which is certainly a critical part of Jesus' and the Church's teaching over the centuries. And I agree with that. And I agree that this is a part of the mission of the church, right? And part of Jesus' mission, right? I am not a member of Pax Christi, but they do have a bishop advisor and have been more actively involved in the organization in the past. 
while certain members may have spoken on the issues that you describe, it is not on behalf of the organization. So he does know that members of Pax Christi USA are out there pushing for homosexuality, advancing the idea of women's ordination. He knows this. He admits to it. While certain members may have spoken on the issues that you describe, it is not on behalf of the organization. And certain members, we're not just talking about certain members here, right? We are talking about the founding president of Pax Christi USA. In other words, Pax Christi USA was founded in heresy. Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, we're not just talking about some member, right, of Pax Christi USA. This is the founding president who says that God makes people homosexual, right? If you are a homosexual, it's because God made you that way. Never mind the fact, never mind the fact that God himself destroyed two cities over the sin of sodomy, right? This is how radically God abhors the sin of sodomy. And yet, in spite of God's actions in Sodom and Gomorrah, he makes people into sodomites, right? He creates them sodomites, right? They perceive homosexuals to be of a different gender. You know, they're, 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 they are not male, they are not female, they are homosexual, right? And yet, we are told in the book of Genesis that they uh, were created male and female. There's only two genders, male and female. We are not told, you know, male and female and homosexual, he created them. He created them male and female female no third gender there is no third gender but we are told by Thomas Gumbleton that people are made they are created by God as homosexuals right in complete contradiction to the very first book of the Bible right Incredible. So, so it's not just members. These are not just members, right? Sister Helen Prejean, out there advocating women's ordination. She is advocating women's ordination. And she is a frequent speaker at Pox Christi USA gatherings, right? If Pox Christi USA has nothing to do as an organization with the idea that women should be ordained, or with the, the idea of the acceptance of homosexuality, then why do they invite speakers who push, who advocate for these ideas? Sister Helen Prejean, she advocates and believes that one day there will be a woman pope. Not merely that women will be ordained, but that we will have a woman pope within the Catholic Church one day. People. Are you for the ordination of women, and do you think we'll one day see a woman pope? One day we will, because there's just not substantive reasons. And so these are not just members, right? Right? And if, you, if you've got members who advocate and who push for these anti-Catholic ideas, these anti-Catholic doctrines, if you've got members within the or isn't the organization itself made up of members, right? The organization does not stand by itself, right? It is made up of members, and it is made up of heretical members. Bishop John Stowe continues, he says, I am not aware of the Catholic worker movement taking any positions on these matters either, but they are much more loosely organized, so I cannot say that with any absolute certainty. Now, back a few months ago, and I, I, I remembered this, 
as I said, I'm always on the Internet, and so I remembered this incident. A uh, Catholic worker house in Des Moines. Here we go. This is from August 25th, 2015. I remembered this, fellow guy. This is last year, but I remembered it. It says, No Mass for Catholic Group After Woman Performs Service. And it says, A Des Moines Catholic group has been told it can no longer host Mass after allowing a woman to perform sacramental services in December. Bishop Richard Pates of the Diocese of Des Moines ordered the Catholic Worker House to cease holding services in a letter dated May 5th. And so, Catholic Worker, right? This movement, uh, it perhaps was started with good intentions, you know, Dorothy Day, perhaps started with good intentions, but once again, as the movement grows, right, as it grows, uh, you've got heretical members, right, who come in there. You've got sisters like Joan Chittister who come in there and influence these groups, right? And it says, Frank Cordaro, a co-founder of the Catholic Worker House in Des Moines, called the bishop's actions bullying. While the group is known for speaking out against traditional Catholic teachings, they are known for it. Says Cordaro, the Mass wasn't meant to draw attention or cross a line. The Mass performed by a woman was not meant to cross a line. You've crossed the line. You've got a woman who believes that she is a priest, right? And this woman actually has a connection. I actually found the Mass on YouTube. This Des Moines Mass at the Catholic Worker House there in Des Moines. I found the Mass. And so th th this woman, Janice Severi Dusinska, is a woman he f from here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, right? And she performed this Mass. And so there's a connection there to the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And here she is. Let's hear part of uh, this uh, consecration <laughs> by, by, by uh, Priest Janice, Father Janice. Here she is. And so, loving God, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's Janice, and I apologize, that Mass, actually, there is a video of the Mass in Des Moines that is referred to here in this article by Janice, right? Janice uh, conducting a Mass in Des Moines in this Catholic Worker House in Des Moines. There actually is a video, but I chose this video here that you just heard, and I made a clip out of that, and it, it's actually another Catholic Worker House in Washington, D.C. Okay, so I guess, what, does Janice go around? Does she go around these Catholic Worker Houses and just perform Masses for these people? Right? But here she is conducting a mass, performing the concert, and she actually is performing, right? Because she's not a priest. She is not a priest, and so she is performing. She is performing the consecration. Here we go. Janice, Father Janice. Hey, And you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Janice was not a card-carrying member of Pax Christi USA. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But once again, our bishop, Bishop John Stowe, says, I am not aware of the Catholic worker movement taking any positions on these matters either. So they're not taking any positions on this matter either. And yet here we have Father Janice performing a Mass. 
at a Catholic worker house. And so, loving God, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody. So there it is, right? There it is. I am not aware of the Catholic worker movement taking any positions on these matters either, but he does go on to say uh, they are much more loosely organized, so I cannot say that with any absolute certainty. Right? And hey, as I said, uh, Bishop John Stowe seems like a good man, great man, actually. Uh, he is a Franciscan. We have been blessed here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, with a Franciscan friar as a bishop. And so it, it's great. It's great that we have him here as a bishop. But uh, it's, it's, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. Okay? And I told you, we were going to go where mainstream Catholic media, where local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, will not go. You will never hear this. Never on local Catholic radio here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. But I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know because we here at a Cafeteria Catholics, we are firm believers in giving fellow Catholics opportunities to pray. And this is how I want you to look at this. It is an opportunity to pray for our bishop, Bishop John Stowe. You know, we've been down this road before here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky with heretics. Okay? We've been down the road. Some of us, right? So many of us didn't even know that it took place. But some of us, we know. And we were active. We were active in confronting and opposing heresy in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. Right? And I am honored to include myself among those. Okay? And so, you know, you've got Sister Joan Chittister talking about she can spot injustice from a distance. Well, I can spot heresy from a distance. Okay? And I participate actively in the opposition of heresy. Especially in my backyard here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. Okay? You're not just going to come in here and spread hair. I'm not talking about our bishop. I'm just talking about in general. You, you, you're not going to come in here and spread heresy among the laity and confuse the, the, the crap out of the laity here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky without me having a say in it. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay? Pax Christi USA, a long-time heretical movement. And our bishop, he says that he is not a member, he points that out, right? Uh, let's see, he says, Pax Christi USA, as an organization, does not take positions on homosexuality or the ordination of women. It is concerned with promoting the promotion of peace and nonviolence, which is certainly a critical part of Jesus' and the Church's teaching over the centuries. I am not a member of Pax Christi, but they do have a bishop advisor and have been more actively involved in the organization in the past. Because he, he does say that he has been, I believe he's talking about himself, the way that it's worded, it's hard to tell whether he means he himself, right? But he does say, uh, I am not a member of Pax Christi, but they do have a bishop advisor and have been more actively, have been more actively involved in the organization in the past. And if he happens to be speaking about himself, this happens to be true because I also came across a small article here. Let's see if I have it. I have it saved on my computer. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think this is it here. Let's click on that. Let's see. This is from Santa Clara Magazine. And they put out this little excerpt. Uh, congratulating Bishop John Stowe upon his election. And let's see, it says, uh, Humility is a trait that serves a priest well. Uh, humor helps, too. Franciscan Friar John Stowe, who was installed as Bishop of Lexington, Kentucky on May 5th, showed flashes of both when he told one Kentucky paper, I know I will have to learn a lot about horses 
and UK basketball. I know a thing or two about bourbon. So he, he has a sense of humor. That's great. Named to the post by Pope Francis, Stowe, 49, is among the younger bishops. He heads to the Bluegrass State from El Paso, Texas, where he served as moderator of the, cur- uh, of the Curia and Vicar General, and where he regularly celebrated masses in English and Spanish. In Lexington, he says he wants to ensure that Latino members of the congregation feel fully a part of the church and that others recognize that the Hispanic presence is a real gift. While studying studying at SCU's Jesuit School of Theology in Berkeley, Stowe helped lead the local branch of Pax Christi. And so he was involved deeply with Pax Christi. Uh, in the past, so if he's speaking about himself in the email response, then then he's he's right, right? He's he's one hundred percent right. But that's worrisome when we know what Pax Christi is all about, okay? And as I said, our bishop, Bishop John Stowe, he is invited on the pa- uh, on the podcast any time to discuss this issue, okay? But you will not hear this on local Catholic radio. I guarantee you, you will not hear it. Okay? Uh, I am not aware of the Catholic worker movement taking any positions on these matters either, but they are much more loosely organized, so I cannot say that with any absolute certainty. Since you read the article by Mr. Magliano, he's uh, he refers to me, uh, you should be aware of the content of that meeting and the reasons that the bishops present were there. And yeah, they were there to talk about peace, right? Uh, and uh, that's fine. That's great. That's great. I wasn't there, and so I don't know that this is the only thing they talked about, right? It raises a red flag when you've got Pax Christi USA there, when you've got the Catholic Worker Movement there. It raises a red flag with good reason. And so, loving God, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It raises a red flag with good reason. And he continues, he says, uh, You might have noticed that Pope Francis is encouraging and personally engaged in dialogue in many areas. Even if these groups espoused agendas that do challenge or question church teachings, it doesn't mean that there aren't areas in which we can hear each other and have occasions for clarifying. This was not the case at the particular event that you cite. But even if it were, it should not rule out occasions for dialogue. And there's that word, dialogue, right? Pax Christi USA, they love that word, dialogue. Call to action, they love that word, dialogue, because they want to dialogue and dialogue and dialogue until they get their way. This is their definition of dialogue. We get our way in the end, right? That's dialogue. As far as they are concerned, they want their way on women's ordination. They want their way on homosexuality. They want their way on contraception. They want their way on abortion. They want their way on all of these issues. And their way is not the church's way. They are anti-Catholic. And it is disturbing. It is disturbing. It should be at the very least disturbing that our bishop, along with other brother bishops and one abbot, (laughs) entertained heretics. Right? A heretical group, Pax Christi USA. I've never met and I've never read about a member of Pax Christi USA or Call to Action USA who did not, in one way or another, support or advance women's ordination, homosexuality. And I'm speaking from experience, as I said. We here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, many of us, We opposed heresy within the church here in the diocese under the first bishop of the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky, right? 
Pax Christi USA speakers, Call to Action USA speakers, women's ordination and conference speakers. They were the norm here in the Diocese of Lexington, Kentucky. And so I speak from experience. Okay? Sister Joan Chittister, Sister Helen Prey Jean, they may speak about peace and justice, they might speak about the death penalty, but it's all a facade. In the end, their agenda has nothing to do with the tenets of the Catholic Church. Nothing to do with it at all. And it's disturbing. We have a bishop, Bishop John Stowe, who headed up a chapter of Pax Christi USA. We have a bishop who said that Sister Helen Prey Jean, who supports the ordination of women, is one of the heroes of the American Catholic Church. A red flag should go up. And uh, hey, as I said, this is not in any way an attack on Bishop John Stowe. Seems like a great man. He has an affinity for the Spanish people. And hey, I mean, that strikes a chord in my heart. Um, Hispanic, Puerto Rican. And Bishop John Stowe, hey, he has an affinity for, you know, the likes of me. And so that's great. That's great. But I don't consider myself to be a, a Puerto Rican Catholic. Right? A Spanish Catholic. A Hispanic Catholic. I am a Catholic. And I adhere to the teaching of the Catholic Church. In all aspects. Right? And I told you. Right? I told you it was going to get turbulent. Right? It's, and it did. It did, didn't it? Right? But I am a Catholic. Right? And, by the way, did you see where uh, Pope Francis... You know, he uh, tweaked uh, the washing of the feet, and now uh, priests, they can wash the feet of women. And I told you, if ever Pope Francis decided to go ahead and, you know, make it to where priests were allowed to wash the feet of women, that, I, hey, I would keep my mouth shut, right? Because it's his prerogative. He's got the authority to do that, Right? Do I agree with it? Not necessarily, but hey. He is the Pope. And so, I fall in line with his decision to allow priests to wash the feet of women. This is liturgical law, right? The next Pope, he can go ahead and change it back to, you know, only washing the feet of men. I have no problem with it, okay? And many of you pro probably thought that I was going to get on here and start yelling about the fact that Pope Francis changed the liturgy, right? As it pertains to the washing of the feet. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Okay? But hey, I am a Catholic. I'm not a Hispanic Catholic. I, you know you know how you have here in America? You've got, you know, Spanish American, Puerto Rican American, uh, you know, uh, uh, black American. Hey, I'm an American. Okay? Born and raised in this country. It doesn't mean that I shun Puerto Rican culture. And, uh, hey, I love salsa. I love Puerto Rican food. Arroz con habichuela. You know what I'm saying? Pasteles, pernil. I love all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Novelas. <laughs> Actually, I don't like novelas, but my mom, man, I mean, that's all she watches is novelas. All day long. Novelas. You know what I'm saying? Soap operas. Okay. Spanish soap operas. My mom, she she lives and dies for, you know, the next soap opera. But anyway, I am a Catholic. I adhere to the teaching of the Catholic Church. And, you know, a red flag goes up. It goes up. I hear peace and justice. You know. And a red flag goes up. But anyway, let's go ahead and leave it there, fellow Catholics. Told you. We're going to go where mainstream Catholic media will not go. Where local Catholic radio will never go. They will never go where we've been. Let's go ahead and leave it there. We will see you next time, fellow Catholics. Please pray for our bishop, Bishop John Stowe. 
Please pray for the Catholic Church. Please pray for this culture gone wild in this great country of ours. And please pray for this great country of ours. As you know, fellow Catholics, this great country of ours is in dire need of prayer. So please pray. God bless. Assemble the army! Yeah, baby! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, baby! <laughs>